over to the new UK and uh, here's all of these webinars. Nice to see you all. Um, our speaker today is as Rachel. There you are, Rachel. And we're going to learn about our talents and the way the format's going to work because uh, Rachel's also going to leave us with lots of um, tips and guidance that we can use is, uh, is I'm going to ask her some questions and then she will answer us. And I hope you've all got a, a note and pad because this is really going to be awesome. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Rachel's got, got some quotes um, and also um, some tips. As, as I said, this session is called How to Energize and Liberate Your Talent. So everyone is on here because they've got a talent and presumably they want to liberate it with tips and guidance. So, Rachel, um, let's start. I'm um, so firstly, can I ask you to introduce yourself? Who are you, Rachel? Can we just learn a bit about you? Um, hi everyone, thank you so much for joining this Zoom, it's really lovely to see you and um, um, for me this Zoom uh, is about you and me. Um, so I, I, I've been in business for 23 years and um, I've had my own company for that long as well and what I'm really passionate about is helping women to really understand what makes them unique. As you know women are really good at hiding their light under a bushel and by doing that, they shoot themselves in the foot. So deserve to liberate their talent and achieve more. And yeah, this lockdown period, I think, has really changed a lot of things in the world and opened up more opportunities for women. So please feel free to put questions in the chat box. And uh, I like these things to be really interactive. Um, I've got a few props here, a few inspiring quotes, and yeah, lots of practical tips. Brilliant. It's really lovely to meet you. Great. So, um, so I've got some questions, some quick questions, and then other questions in more detail. So, how has the lockdown been treating you? Um, well, gosh, it's been quite glorious, actually. Um, I feel really guilty saying that because it's a really difficult time for a lot of people out there. Um, I moved to the Cotswolds about 12 years ago, having really thought about what I wanted. So, we're, we're very lucky. I've got my husband here and the cat. Um, I'm not homeschooling, which I think would drive me absolutely mad. So, wow, hats off to the people who are doing that out there. Yeah, um, we all need a medal. <laughs> you do, you really do. So, yeah, not, not too bad. And I work from home a lot anyway, and I do a lot of Skype and telephone coaching. So I'm, I'm very lucky, I think, and um, very grateful just for having that. So how's the cabin fever been? Can you recommend any remedies? <laughs> Yes, I can actually. Um, a nap every day works really, really well. Um, I've been shoveling manure into a barrow um, times four every day onto our allotments and then jumping up and down on it. And uh, it's fantastic exercise. <laughs> but it makes a change from being for a walk. And I, I naturally wake up really early in spring about five o'clock. So I've been doing that when no one's looking, otherwise they're going to think I'm completely deranged. Um, but yeah, it's really good exercise and I need to do that to get into the soil so that something will grow. Um, but it's really dry at the moment, so loving the sunshine, but it'd be nice to have a bit of rain as well. Yeah. <laughs> Might do a rain dance later. Well, it's going to be raining all next week, so... Uh, Is wish it? Okay. Mark, yeah. <laughs> and what positives have you found in lockdown? Um, I've convinced myself I really love visual transformation, otherwise known as spring cleaning. Um, and reading and it's also been lovely not to travel um just to have more time to enjoy nature and i think we're so you know this is a really difficult time for many and strange is probably the word that most people use about it but actually to have more time to really reflect on where you're at and what next and to connect with people you might not really connect with um i think that's a gift um it's, it's very different for different people but yeah for me those are positives Okay, Rachel, your voice is very faint. Uh, all it... my sound is on Mac, so I don't know if you want to move a bit closer. Uh, <laughs> I, think I need to improve my text. So let me know if, if I need to. Um, move yeah, so... maybe if you put all the volume onto Max. Um, yeah. Okay, what, 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 if anything, have you done to make a difference to others during lockdown? You know, I've been giving up my lunch hours to do these webinars to help on the Thursday nights to allow people to talk about well-being and so on. In the media about people raising money and running and loads of things and that feels really kind of pressure to me 
so I've just done my own version of making a difference. Um, a lot of people are walking more at the moment. So um, we live opposite Cornbury Park and more and more people are walking through the gates. And I noticed they were all squeaking. So I put a bit of WD-40 in my pocket and I oiled all the hinges. <laughs> um, so that's like a little tiny thing I did. Um, I felt really ashamed actually, because at Christmas I found myself doing social media we had a 97 year old neighbor and I hadn't spoken to her for a few weeks. So um, I, I felt really bad about that. And it was, it was a bit more attention on the importance of community. So I've just dropped some flowers outside her house as a surprise, just to kind of make me smile. Um, Cause at 97, that must be really tough. Yeah. It's, yeah. I feel, I, yeah, it's a really difficult topic, but I've, I've, I've done little things that make a big difference, hopefully. Not compared to the people who work in the NHS, my goodness. Yes, quite. Well, um, I've got a fantastic, <laughs> apart from having enough every day, um, I've got a fantastic massage cushion that you press a button and it massages all the, um, the neck muscles and the back muscles. So when you've been zooming all day and just sitting in one position, it's just wonderful. And it's my new best friend in lockdown. And it's really nice to escape from Zoom and just switch off. So that's an example. <laughs> um, another thing I've been doing is... Um, there's a fantastic um, tool called the pause exercise. So you sit in a chair or on a toilet or anywhere and you close your eyes for 10 minutes. And you listen to all the sounds around you. That stops you listening to the internal better in your head, you know, the worries about the future or what's going to happen. Because um, you can only think on and listen on one channel at a time. So I really recommend that you try that as a tip. Um, sit in the chair, close your eyes, really kind of ground yourself listen to the external sounds and the internal chatter in your head will start to quieten and your body will feel, feel, feel with energy um yeah it's just brilliant brilliant okay what i'm focusing on at the moment is taking my business much more to offer programs to support people because so many people are going to have to change career direction um, their career aspirations are going to be different to what they were because of everything changing. Um, and I'm not very techy, so it's quite, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit like swimming up, uphill in treacle for me to do things like that. Podcasts and webinars. So apart from all the little things that I mentioned earlier to help specific people locally, um, all gates, um, I'm focused on how I can support lots of people in the next few months they're going to really need it um, so that's really important okay i think the coronavirus is going to change the world of work a huge amount it's been changing quite a lot very slowly and the whole brexit thing has been slowing it down so i was um, there's a lot of stuff in the media about this topic um individuals need to take responsibility for their own career much more than they have in the past there's going to be a big shift from employment to self-employment and portfolio careers. If you think about employers, they've taken a lot of the risk on board themselves. And um, it, it's really important that individuals, especially women and especially women lawyers, solicitors and barristers, get much more comfortable with marketing themselves because there's going to be less jobs and more competition. And it's all about um, who you know and actually feeling comfortable with what you want to do. So I just want to share a prop at this point. How good are you? How good are you at playing your own trumpet? Because a lot of women really find that very difficult. I want to give you a tip here. Women, doing that indirectly is really, really useful. Most women don't feel comfortable. Think about how you can market yourself indirectly you want to achieve. It's really important to be very focused because social media can be very overwhelming. Women generally dislike marketing themselves. So indirect ways of getting what you want in your career are things like, my client said this was a really good project or deal or case. Here's a testimonial getting other people to actually be your own ambassadors and advocates and raving fans. How can you stand out? So many people are sharing so many things and it's quite overwhelming. 
is getting harder and harder to be noticed. So think about what makes you unique and also your personal brand. If you think about all the information that's been shared online, how can you stand out in a way that's original and new? Don't feel like you have to be a sheep. Really, really be yourself and believe in yourself. So a key insight when marketing yourself is do it indirectly. Women. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does. It's really important to have a specialism. My mom my mother, she's a, a really incredible woman. Uh, she did an open university law degree while having four children. And I have huge admiration for that. She left school at 16 and she's achieved so much. And when I was growing up, she used to interrupt me all the time and finish my sentences. And it was really annoying. <laughs> and I subsequently realized that she was really, she is really, really bright. And I was curious about whether that was the legal training that she had um, or whether it was her. So I just, I'm very curious by nature. So I started um, networking at the Association of Women Solicitor events and I met all these different women lawyers and so many of them, they just, they don't like marketing themselves. And, and it's such a hard, especially at that time, like, you know, 20 years ago, it's such a hard area for women to be in private practice, um, you know, fee earning in six minute units. Um, women have to take time off to have kids and they're the primary caregivers. They do most of the household tasks like cleaning. Um, and I thought, wow, do you know what? I can really help, I can really help you. Um, it was really weird at that time because I felt like an alien. Um, I go to these networking events and they go like, yeah, but you're not a lawyer, what are you doing here? And I thought, well, I just I just need to meet some more people, <laughs> and uh, I think it's quite useful for you because, um, yeah. So it's, it's been it's been a weird journey, um, and um, yeah, I've I've met lots of amazing, amazing women lawyers, both barristers and solicitors, and I've learned so much from them. So um, yeah, that's why I, I focus on women lawyers because my mum inspired me. I was curious, and I realised I could be useful to support them in a, a really fast changing legal profession. No, not as much as they need to, is a quick answer to your question. Um, a personal brand is the territory that you want to occupy in the minds and the hearts of your target audience. So well-known brands in the marketplace are Chrissy Lightfoot, who's based up in the north, um, the naked lawyer, the entrepreneur lawyer, she does it really, really well. Um, and then there's Nick Freeman, Mr. Loophole. Um, if you, if you picture a Zoom call with all those boxes in front of you or LinkedIn, what makes you stand out? How can you sum that up in three words? Um, no, I don't think lawyers realise how important it is, but I think after this lockdown period and the new online life that we're all living, they will think about it more. Sure. Lawyers think it's quite gimmicky, actually. <laughs> That's not brand. That's like, what? what? <laughs> but yeah, it's important. I want to sum yourself up really succinctly. And what's really important with the personal brand is what is the benefit of what you bring to other people? Because that is a motive. It's not what's in it for you. It's what's in it for them. That's really important to reflect on. And it takes a lot of analysis and reflection to get to those three words. Um, in a nutshell, I help my clients to think about who they are in depth, what makes them unique believe in themselves and how to express it and that's really hard for most people because especially women and especially women lawyers they're incredibly talented and incredibly modest um, but they haven't actually had the time or the tools to sit down and really think about that um, so my job is just to liberate what's already there um, and, and that just really inspires me to sort of see my clients do that and to go on from strength to strength okay so a portfolio career is a growing area that gives you a future-proof career so that you can move in different directions. As you change as a stages or interests, you can adjust it over time. As external market and trends change, you can adjust and pivot to those changes. 
So Sally, you, for example, you have a portfolio career. It might not be a label you relate to. Um, I had to look at your, um, your online assets. Um, so, you know, you're a barrister, you founded your own network, you're an MED, um, you do training, um, you do lots of things. I mean, wow. So what, what, if you put that a, as a recipe, you have different aspects in terms of the ingredients. And you're using all your talents in different ways to help people. Um, a portfolio career is essentially a way of adjusting to uncertain times. So what people need to do to create their own is to reflect internally about their own strengths, their skills, their qualities, their motivations, their interests, experience and knowledge. And then to look externally at the market as it changes. And, and lawyers never used to think about markets. Um, so that's an interesting change in itself. So it's a portfolio career was a combination of internal reflection and analysis, looking at external trends, and then working out where is the sweet spot that you can help different audiences to make a difference and to play to your values and your motivations. And it's something that is always changing. So, you know, look at where we are now. Um, such uncertain times and I really feel for the lawyers because you know lawyers are so talented and intelligent and you're trained to see the risks and everything and you can tell me that lawyers don't like ambiguity. My goodness I mean the last three years of all the uncertainty it must be horrendous. Um, so yeah a portfolio career in a nutshell is a it's a, a future-proof career for certain times and it's really important to have plan A, B and C, so that you can adjust to what's happening and to always think about the future and what the thought there. Coaching is an unregulated market, so anybody can become a coach and that is quite scary in itself. Um, I often help people to become coaches and I think, blimey, I'm creating my own competition, but that's the nature of abundance. So, the clients that I work with, are atypical lawyers, people who fell into the law, do and want to do something else. I tend to work with people who don't fit in a box, they've got talents, um, they have high creativity and entrepreneurial ability and emotional intelligence, and they just don't feel like they really fit where they are. And then they're fed up with being fed up and they want to do something about it. And um, people always come to me when they're ready for change. And um, yeah, I've met some fantastic people over the years. Yeah, really amazing. Mm. <laughs> um, my background is a creative industry and um, I'm very visual. And, you know, do you know, when you go to a networking event and everyone's sitting around looking quite awkward and uncomfortable, especially when like round tables, sometimes having a physical crop, it just gets curious and it starts conversation. And when people start chatting, they feel less anxious. So I'm just going to share a couple of my favourite props. I found this one in Hamleys and it was behind the counter and they were selling it at a <laughs> discount price. Can you imagine being? and your kids like pressing that button all the time i love this prop because for me it really sums up the inter interconnected world in which we live and how stressful it can be when you've done eight zooms in a day or maybe more um that's how you feel and that's <laughs> that's when it's a good time to go for a walk and this is one of my favorites as well You know, one of the good things about this lockdown time is giving people more time to really think about who they are and what they want. And a magic wand is a way of thinking, OK, what do I really want? Write it down, write it down in a lot of detail and create an image board that sums up all those things for you. Just use images and words. And it really works. Um, when I was living in London about 12 years ago, I was ready for change and I thought, what do I really 
one. I want to live in a, a, a peaceful place with really good transport and culture nearby and a sense of community. And I wrote it all down and I created an image board and I couldn't find that place for quite a few years. And then I came to where I live now completely by chance. Um, and I went back after that weekend and I'm like, I'm moving, this is it. It's really magical. And remember that magic wand, even through difficult times and uncertain times, you can get what you want. You just need to believe it and keep on taking a step forward one at a time. So a, a few years ago, I got to as the most senior person of the biggest law firm in the world, France, and I achieved that by being a bit cheeky. I, I can be a bit cheeky, actually. I'm naturally quite proactive. And um, so what happened was I went to an event where they were celebrating people who were giving back. And Clifford Chance had been in the news that day for being one of the worst law firms to work for because they were like so full on. So at this event, there were some Clifford Chance lawyers and I bounded up to them and I said, oh, is it true you've got camp beds in your office because the hours are so long? <laughs> and they thought, is this woman? Um, but that's just me being a bit cheeky. Um, so I got their cards and um, I started sending them my newsletter. And then about a year later, after they received my newsletter, I got to work with someone and then that went well and they referred me to their boss and their boss referred me to the managing partner of the aunts. So there you go. You know, that it's not about money and marketing. It's about taking a step forward, making a difference, being proactive and being a bit cheaper sometimes. Yeah, I love that. I'd love that story. <laughs> Have you got beds? Uh, good at. Not at all. <laughs> I've very rarely met any woman who loves that. Um, women find that really hard. It makes them feel quite um, pushy and anxious and they don't like it and therefore they don't do it. And that is re related to the neuroscience and the difference, differences between men and women. So um, what's really important is to just accept that that is okay, that is how women feel and how you can step around that or jump over it. Um, what is really important is not to do nothing because if you do nothing then you don't put you don't put yourself forward and and that's just not on so think about one simple way that would make you feel comfortable to say i'm good at it going back to the point i made earlier doing it indirectly works really well for women um so think about what would work for you but in a nutshell yeah women do not like saying i'm really good at it. And I actually coached someone earlier on about um, women don't tend to be very good at accepting praise. You know what? To actually accept the compliment is, is, is say thank you. Even if you don't like receiving what people are saying because it feels a bit awkward, just say thank you. Because that compliment is a gift that they thought about giving to you. Say thank you or just to accept that praise. Is like kind of batting out that thoughtfulness into the into the sky so um yeah say thank you and just that's all you need to do mm. i'm really good at um i'm really good at listening you know i grew up in <laughs> i grew up in a family with um three siblings and people who really talked a lot i couldn't get a word in edgeways and i got really good at listening and that was a gift. Looking back on it, it was really challenging at the time. And it gave me quite a lot of confidence issues that I've really addressed through personal development. And I help my clients too. I'm really good at listening. I'm really good at positive reframing. Very, very optimistic. And I can find the most positive thing in the most shitty situation. <laughs> um, and that's quite useful in, you know, difficult and uncertain times. Um, I've always been a natural connector. Um, I've built up a really good network, a bit like Sally has, and, and I can't stop myself from connecting people. And it takes up a lot of time. It's something that I just really, really do naturally. Um, what else? Um, I don't get excited about being organised, but it's part of who I am. And it's really useful having a, a portfolio <laughs> career because it can be quite full on when everything's kicking off. And, um, yeah, no, those are the main things. Great. I think probably. Um, 
it's here yeah, if you look at neuroscience and this is a really interesting point actually i've had so many conversations with diversity and inclusion at law firms and barristers and i say so do you say that men and women are different and every single one of them said no why is that that's extraordinary how can we not and men and women are different men are um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about men actually, I'm talking about women, because this is a women in the law network. Um, women do not feel comfortable marketing themselves and saying I'm good at, that is part of who they are and that has a big cost in their career and in their lifetime. To actually get um, firms and people to acknowledge, yes, men and women are different. They are so busy tiptoeing around all the stereotypes but conversations don't happen and change doesn't happen. And do you know what? Here we are with the coronavirus. The world of work is going to change so much. And all the things that make women brilliant, relationship building, thoughtfulness, they are so needed when the world returns to the new whatever it's going to be. Why don't we have those conversations? You know, I understand that lawyers are risk averse, but to not actually talk about that. Wouldn't it be brilliant to have a debate for and against? Men and women are different. Discuss. Experts. So lawyers are taught to risks and they're taught to think reductive. So they always see the problems in any situation. And I think that it must be really, really difficult to change in that environment. So when my career clients come to me, um, they tend to see the negatives of everything. Um, they go around in vicious circles. Because you think about it, every option at the moment probably is quite scary and quite risky. Um, and that's where I'm quite useful to my clients because I'm not trained as a lawyer and I'm an optimist and I can help them to get out of that sort of vicious circle loop. Um, lawyers have a lot of positive things that often they forget. So critical thinking, for example, is a really, really important future skill they are taught to have and other people need to have and that's a new career path for lawyers help people who aren't lawyers to think about critical thinking um what else yeah well just you know they're such succinct communicators you know what are the key points what are the key salient points from reading a whole shed load of information and communicating that it's a real gift especially with so much information out there being shared online that's a real asset Okay. So yeah, um, more and more lawyers are going to have to change career direction because of artificial intelligence taking some jobs. Um, more and more lawyers are changing career direction. You know, lawyers are becoming coaches, lawyers are becoming journalists. So critical thinking, research, advocacy, um, communication, many, many things, negotiation. Um, lawyers have many transferable skills, but often they forget that. Um, I don't believe in regrets. Um, yeah, I do. But regret achieves nothing. Um, have I had disappointments? Yes, I think that's really normal. Um, I had a very challenging time in 2007. Um, I self funded a six month uh, CPD career break to get into the talent management space. And then the credit crunch happened. Um, and I lived off my savings to do that. That was really, really hard. And I chose to take the difficult path rather than the easy path. It's made me resilient. So going back to what I was saying, you know, everything is a gift. I don't think that's a regret. It was frustrating um, after all the hard work. Um, so that's my answer to that question. Um, career achievements. Well, for me, seeing my clients achieve what they want to achieve is what motivates me. Um, people are amazing if they actually believe that they can do something and it's wonderful to support them to do that. Yeah. Believe in yourself. Take the long-term view. Invest in your career capital. And what I mean by that is things that will make you more masterful over time. So build your network. Think about how you can invest in your marketability whether it's being a, a panelist or doing a keynote talk or writing an article it's really important to make time for these things 
else would I say in terms of liberating talents? Uh, I think that was four because I was writing it down. Oh, I wasn't counting, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's becoming more and more important to have a, a large online diverse network. And I think the lockdown period has really kind of shown that. But also to have a, a group of people who you really like and trust and they are supportive of you, whether it's a a personal board or a group of people who just can really help you to be more of who you are and you can help them to be more of who they are. That's fine, isn't it? Yes, fantastic. <laughs> well, um, I think uh, let's leave it there. Like, can we give a clap to Rachel, please? So that was really interesting and really useful. And the last point about personal board, I thought was really good. That's something I often say when I'm keynoting, have your own personal board that you can speak to so i was it's brilliant to hear that advice as well so we've got some questions in the chat so that was really good thank you so much <laughs>